Um, good morning from the, well, afternoon, well, almost afternoon on the East Coast. Uh, I'm Melissa Gilbert, big surprise. Um, <laughs> and I am one of the founders of Modern Prairie. And I wanted to take a minute before we get to talk to our incredible pal here, Christine, my friend. Um, I wanted uh, to have a chance to tell you guys, if you don't know about Modern Prairie, and forgive me, I'm going to look here on InstaLive, and then we've got Facebook Live over here, so I'm, I might go back and forth a bit. But um, I wanted to give you guys a little bit of an idea of just what Modern Prairie is and why I'm so excited about it. And it's been such a, a passion of mine, an idea that's been rolling around in my brain for the longest time to create a space... Um, where all women, but specifically women 45 and up, can share what they're going through in life, celebrate this process that is the aging process, as opposed to being um, afraid of it or intimidated by it or try and stop it because it is inevitable, and share our experiences in life at this particular phase in our lives. Um, whether that's children moving out, grandchildren coming, um, uh, work, step kids, step kids <laughs> work things, not working anymore, retirement issues, changes, all of the changes. And, you know, as long as we live, we have to continue to change because life continues to change. So I, I wanted us to have a place where we could share our ideas and our experiences and our strength and our hope, and then also lift each other up and celebrate and learn and stay curious and continue growing in leaps and bounds. Because I really feel like um, as we get to be a certain age, there there is a real tendency in society to sort of push us aside and negate us because we're no longer breeders necessarily. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I think that's really a, a huge mistake on so many different levels. Um, we are the wise ones. We have, at, at this point in our lives, we've lived lives and we've had experiences. And that um, deserves some respect and attention. And also, let's face it, we're the consumers. I mean, yeah. advertising executives and, and designers, they don't they're, it's so short-sighted what they're thinking. We're the ones who actually can spend, do spend, and have the money to spend. Mm -hmm. So we really need to start telling people what we want out there, what we want to spend our money on. Um, and, um, and so that's why we're here. And I'm going to tell you really quickly, my partners and I have created a space for our modern mavens. And the modern mavens are women that... Um, we find extraordinary in one way or another, whether they're creators or originators or scientists or it, it doesn't matter. These are, are women that, um, who, I should say not that, it's objectifying, I like whom better. These are women who have done something incredible with their lives that we feel is important to share with everybody out there. And our modern maven who exemplifies this really in the most extraordinary way, is Christine Semple. And we are at her house today. And I'm going to let her explain who she is and and what she does and why and where she came from. Yep. And um, and then we're going to answer some questions yes. and we're going to talk about some stuff. And um, the thing that you should know is that um, Christine is a life coach. Mm -hmm. um, and eventually, moving forward, we're going to have seminars and sessions. And we haven't decided yet what my participation will be because we're not sure if I'm a distraction or a help. <laughs> but I will definitely Let us know. <laughs> yes, please tell us if you want to be in a, 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 um, a life coaching session talking about life and changes and emotions. Am I distracting to you or am I someone you want to have there sharing her stories? I don't know. Um, this is a big question. But we really want to provide you with the most wonderful tools and ideas and inspiration moving forward um, as we continue to grow and learn. So I think one of the best people that I know that can help with that is Christine. Thank you. You're very Thank welcome. You. And I'm going to jump back to one thing that Melissa said. And, you know, she had said, um, people out there may start to discount us as we get older. 
we do it ourselves. Mm -hmm. We very often think, oh my God, I'm 60 or oh my gosh, I'm 50. Now, now what do I do? Well, why do we put an age on it? When we were 10, we're like, what are we going to do? <laughs> so why, why are we going to put an age on it? Um, and, and limit ourselves because I think, um, we, we can do it ourselves. Um, so I want to thank Melissa and the, and the team very much. And my dear friend, Allie, who, um, nominated me, who got in, in touch with Nicole. That's right. And, um, I really appreciate her connecting us and, uh, you know, I am a life coach. Um, I'm a life coach and nutritionist and a personal trainer. And, but my, my, you know, I started way before this. Um, I grew up in a small town. In fact, I just came back from seeing my parents and I was the creative black sheep of a family of all medical doctors. And I knew at a young age, I wanted to go into fashion. And I was told at a young age that I was going to be nothing but trouble and that my choices were going to be a disappointment. <sighs> And, um, so, you know, that seed was planted really early of maybe not being enough, um, and proving myself. And so I stuck to my guns and I came to New York city and I was in the fashion industry and I had a really successful career and worked with amazing people and had curated a life that looked as though everything I was, I was on top of the world. I had a social life. I had all of the things, I had all of the trappings to show that I was successful. And behind it all, I was drowning. I was drowning in shame mm. and guilt um, of being an alcoholic. I was numbing everything. I was, um, I had an eating disorder. So I was numbing and I was starving. Oh, and gosh. it was, I wasn't enough. I wasn't thin enough, I wasn't pretty enough, I wasn't successful enough, I wasn't, just wasn't enough. And all of the things couldn't fill whatever I wanted to have filled. So I, um, I hit rock, rock bottom several times and checked myself into three rehabs over a course of five years. And the first two, I came out and I had stopped drinking. So I thought I cured the problem. Went right back to work, worked harder, um, proved myself even more that I was stronger, that I was tougher. I stopped drinking. I started to isolate and I changed nothing else. I didn't change my mindset. I didn't change how I was living. Um, and that obviously didn't work. Yeah. So when I, I was kicking the teeth when I checked myself into my third rehab and I knew something needed to change, but I didn't know what I was doing wrong. I was doing everything that I, society told me I was supposed to do. And um, so out of the third rehab, so it's June of 2018, I am sober. I had finally gotten fired from my job. I, so the only career, the only identity I ever knew was gone. And I turned 50. Oh. And I, there was a switch that finally flipped in my head and I'm like, okay, so far I was worried about what was I going to do when I got out now and worried about other people. Now I was like, who do I want to be? I have this amazing opportunity to become someone that I'm proud of, someone that, you know, I finally would, would have a purpose because who I was the past couple of decades obviously wasn't serving me anymore. And that's when my journey began. And I, my journey of self healing, of self help, um, I had an amazing partner by my side um, through all of this. And um, that's when I decided, okay, I have something to share. If I'm still here, I have something to share. I have some experience to share. I have hopefully some words of wisdom to share and I have hope to share with other people who may be feeling the same way, but thinking that they're alone out there. And that is when I went back to school 
at 50 and I became a life coach, a nutritionist, a personal trainer, started my own company, which I never even imagined, even in my 30s and 40s. And um, since, you know, in the years that have followed, I've helped hundreds and hundreds of women start their own journey, whether it be life coaching, nutrition, personal training, starting their journey of self-love, of self-acceptance, of feeling good enough, of feeling more than good enough, because we all are. Yeah. And um, so that is, you know, why, why we're here today. You know, it's, we all feel stuck at some point. Oh, yeah. And I have helped people get unstuck of where, wherever they are. Um, and everybody who's out there, you know, listening today, there was a woman, a comment that went by a while ago that really, it, it caught my attention and I'm going to have to paraphrase it because I was trying to listen to you and I was watching the comments and the comments are, they're coming in fast and furious and a lot of them are the same, but there was a woman who said, and I believe she said, I'm 54 years old. I feel like I have no purpose. I have no place. I'm, I believe she said useless and unimportant. Mm. And that's what stuck is. Yeah. You know, that's that. That's that feeling of, well, what value do I have anymore? How can I contribute anymore? And, and I think we, we do have a tendency to take on a lot of what society tells us, that we're, we are no longer valid, that we really are, you know, old gray-haired grannies that should just sit in the corner and bake cookies and knit. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, I, I look to inspiration from women like you, women like... Helen Mirren yes. and uh, Anna Winter mm -hmm. and Meryl Streep. Most of them are in my industry because that's what I do. So I look to the consistency and the the continued growth career-wise that, that I'm attracted to. But these are women who don't accept, who've never accepted or believed what they've heard, maybe right. entirely. I'm sure they've thought about it at times because we all have but they don't take it on board and let it absolutely stop them. And I know there are tools mm -hmm. that women can use to get unstuck and to not let it stop them. So maybe you could share a little about. Absolutely. And that's what, you know, that's what we, I work on with clients and that's what we hope to work on with everyone here. And I'm doing the same thing looking at both cameras. I apologize. Um, you know, it's, it's taking that age out of it. And not limiting ourselves. We can self-sabotage ourselves by saying, I'm useless. That negative self-talk, we have to remember that we're listening to ourselves. And we, we, show, people, we show people how to treat us. Mm -hmm. So if we're treating ourselves like I'm useless. So it's everything that I say and that we work with, none of it is easy. There is work behind it but it's starting to change your own narrative. And that was part of it. The narrative that was in my brain was, yeah, maybe it was planted when I was younger or it was experiences or it was, you know, comparisonitis in New York City. I, <laughs> I've never heard that before. <laughs> I was the one in my own brain keeping it alive. Uh -huh. And so we need to change our own narrative. We need to start telling ourselves that we aren't, that we are useful. And that is a process, yes. right? Because you don't immediately, at least for me, I never immediately said, okay, I'm going to feel this way. Right. Now. I actually had to start by saying, okay, I'm going to fake my way. Yes. I'm going to tell myself that this is how I feel. I faked it till I made yeah. it. Thus, and it's baby steps. And I told, you know, one of the team and they're like, I like that. You know, sometimes everything we think our only purpose or our only goal is to climb Mount Everest. When we climb Mount Everest, we've got to go to a sporting goods store first and get the tools and get, that's where we start. We right. start with maybe my purpose is to smile a little bit more today. Smiling brings other people joy. It brings us joy. If we walk around and we're not happy, put a smile on your face. Look at yourself in the mirror. That can be your goal, your purpose for a month. That's fantastic. And it's, it's not everything. It cannot be leaps and bounds. 
I have step, we work on stepping stone goals. Even with, you know, even if we're talking about nutrition, drink more water. Well, what is that gonna do for me? Well, it sure as heck is a good start. We think everything needs to be so large and reach for something so large and then right. it's not obtainable. Start with smiling more. Start with that darn junk drawer that is keeping you hostage because you look at it and you shut it and you're like, I'm just too lazy to do it. No, you're not. Spend 10 minutes and clean it and it is visual right in front of you. There's so many things going through my head right now because of baby steps, because I am the kind of person that I want to race to the result mm -hmm. as quickly as possible. And then the competitive person in me wants to be the best at the result. Yeah. Even the steps I want to be best at. So I really have to, I ha my mantra to myself is slow down. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I add a spanky, slow down spanky <laughs> and just relax a second. Right? It doesn't all have to happen immediately. And, and when we're talking about stuff like this, I know people tend to balk um, about therapy and working with life coaches and self-reflection because I think the general assumption is there's, there's a few things going on. No, it's not going to work. It's not my problem. And, or I have so much history from my childhood and all the trauma that I suffered. There's no way I'm going to make it out of this. Mm -hmm. And if you, if you think about it this way, in baby steps start by smiling. Mm -hmm. You're not dealing with your childhood trauma yet. We're not there. We're not even close to there. We, you may never even get there, but it doesn't mean that you have to be stuck where you are. You can take tiny, tiny steps forward to, and it is about loving yourself. It is about loving yourself and self-acceptance. And that, does, that doesn't mean we love everything about ourselves. Of course, we always want to evolve. We always want to grow, but it's that self-acceptance of, yes, I can do this. Yes, I know I can take that step. And our past doesn't define us. And I think a lot of us think that. And I was listening to something I was, I was driving yesterday and I was listening um, to Hal Elrod. Um, and I'm going to paraphrase, but where, where we are is a result of who we have been. Where we're going is based on who we desire to be. And who do we desire to be? And that's, I, I knew that where I was wasn't serving me. I'm sure there are a lot of people that would say that as well. But I was the only one that could change it. And I think that's the other thing we have to remember. We can't look at to other people. Yeah. If we, the one thing, you know, I say a lot. If we are the challenge, we are the solution. Yeah. And that's where it needs to start. End stage. This oh, is a yeah. this is a really tough. Oh goodness, here it is. Yeah. This is Joanne Galvan, I believe. I'm 46 years old on end stage renal failure on dialysis every day for 10 hours. God bless her. Yeah. Tired, depressed, and fighting each day to stay alive for my kids, but I'm stuck in my head, yeah. and it's very ugly. Yeah. And bless you um, for 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 reaching out for being here today. And you know what? That's the first step. You're here. You still have hope. You still know that you are awareness. Acknowledging is your first step. And if you're saying, okay, I'm stuck. The next question is then going to be, what are small actions that I can take? Is it, you know, and we, we can't, we can't change the course of what the environment is giving us. Mm -mm but we can choose to handle it in a way that we are proud of, that we approve of. Um, and it sounds as though you're, you know, you're, you're fighting something serious and you're, you're so worried about your kids. You're an amazing mom. <laughs> the fact, the, I will say, the fact that you are physically experiencing something that catastrophic and that um, uh, difficult to get through just that. And you're thinking about your kids is amazing. Yeah. You're an amazing mom. You're an amazing human being and how to get out of your own thoughts. No, it's not easy, but the baby steps start with smiling, 
start with, um, you know, when you find yourself stuck, okay, acknowledge it. Don't deny it. Don't push anything under the rug. Ever. That is ev never we're saying that. Yeah. No. But okay. What's one action that I can do? And that's what is the smallest, least risky thing that I can do today? Or let's even say the least hard thing that I can do today that's going to make the biggest difference tomorrow. Mm -hmm. You yeah. know, sometimes it's even as tiny. I know I've gotten in these places where I go through, where I've been through really traumatic events in my life and they knock me way back. They knock me back on my heels and, and they do that for everybody. You know, mm -hmm. emotionally, I just am in, and I'm talking about like major grief, deaths and divorce and those things. And I've found that when I am in that space, sometimes, even though it's exhausting and I don't want to, it's just brushing my teeth. That's true. You know, it's yeah. it's that tiny a thing. Um, and that is important. What are your thoughts on grief? I lost my 24-year-old son to suicide. Oh, I'm, so I'm 58 and I feel like I can't help myself and my family. Uh, I'm... Suicide is a very, it, it's, it's traumatic for everyone who, who loved that person. Um, and the one thing I'm going to say is take care of yourself. Make yourself important. I know your family is important and you're trying to support them. So we can't always say, or we bulk at, well, make yourself a priority. Make yourself important. Yeah. Make yourself part of of the process. I think also having dealt with grief in so many different ways in my life and, and walked so many friends and, and dear close people to me through the process of grief, I think the other thing to remember is that everybody grieves in a different way and you need to respect your own grief before you can do anything for anybody else. You really need to feel all, all of those yes. things and, and walk through them and not Stuff them away because you're taking care of someone else. Because um, that'll come back in the long run, too. It does. Um, and, and suicide does have its own hole as the child of a father who died by suicide. It has its own whole ball of stigma and pain and guilt. And it, it, it sort of, I feel like it amplifies grief even more. And the death of a child is... And I've seen it. My best friend lost a child. And I've watched people go through it, and it's still unfathomable to me. Yeah. Um, but I think the, 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 the place to start is just to remember that you need to deal, to take care of your own grief yeah. and, and allow yourself to grieve the way you grieve, just as you would allow anybody else to grieve the way they do. We don't tell our children, don't cry, don't you know, it's, it's not time for you to, you, you shouldn't feel bad. So why do we do that to ourselves? Right. It's, it's very true. And so it, it's the steps. And then sometimes, honestly, it's accountability when you are ready, no matter what it is. And when that's accountability, the team made an amazing community, modern prairie, like-minded women and men who are going through things. You're reaching out. You're on a community right now. You're not isolating. I'm proud of you for that. I think it's amazing. Um, and knowing that when you are ready, when you have done as much processing as you can do, and you're like, now mm -hmm. what? Well, we may, we don't have all the answers ourselves. <clears throat> oh. And nobody else has the answers. <laughs> I don't want to. <laughs> nobody has all of the answers for you. No one has answers for us. Right. But someone's perspective to ask a question that maybe you haven't asked yourself, or maybe you have asked yourself just in a different mindset, or their tone is a little bit different. Sometimes it has you thinking things a little bit differently, or there's an aha, yeah, I've never thought about it that way. Yeah. And that's no one else helping you grieve. That's no one else doing the work for you. That's just an accountability partner who, whomever it is, whomever you're comfortable with, that when it gets tough, and it, it is going to get tough. 
Mm. When we're when we're trying to work through, you know, a mob that a bog that we're going through, um, you know, somebody who's going to be on that other side, somebody who's going to get us through the tough times, and not say, oh, it's okay, but what's next? Who do you want to be? Who do you want to become? Mm -hmm. What do you want to do? And um, that's important too. We don't have to. Very often, we're afraid. And, you know, Melissa, you had even said stigma. We're afraid to ask for help sometimes. Oh, oh, deeply. Because it, for me, and this is me, for the longest time, it just felt selfish. Right. It felt so self-centered to ask someone to help me. I mean, I, and I'm, I, <laughs> what, what did you call it? Comparisonitis? Comparisonitis. I have capableitis. <laughs> I tend to be. You can do everything. Overly capable. Yes. yes. Um, and I have to actually consciously stop and go, I don't know, I can't, yeah. it's not my thing. I need to learn someone show me, I don't know how to do it. And it, it, it took me a long time not to be, you know, that soldier just figured out, I'll get it done. Right. Um, and that's, again, for me, that's, that's a baby step. Yep. It's, it, and, and, you know, asking for help, knowing that you don't have to do it all by yourself, having bad days, but bad days does not create a bad a bad day or a bad time does not create a bad life unless you allow it. Mm -hmm. It's a, a, so much of what we do are choices. Um, and we can choose to isolate or choose to numb or choose not to feel, or we can choose to as hard as it is to feel and to move through it and to process through it and say, oh, I got out on the other side. Because we do get out on the other side. I used to be so afraid when I was younger that if I started to cry, it would never stop. Until the one time I finally thought, I'm just gonna do it. And if I never stop, someone will come and take me away. Right. And it stopped. Eventually it stopped and I felt better. Yeah. Because I, I allowed myself to feel what I was feeling and I walked through with that feeling. It didn't go completely away. It's mm. still a feeling that comes back, but I, it just seemed like such a, such a healthier thing to do for myself. And it's, it's processing. It's, it's, you know, if we, don't, if we hold on to everything so tight, I use that analogy of the little kid with the cookie jar, he puts his hand in and he's holding so tight that he can't get the cookie out because his fault his, let it, let some things loosen up. Um, and we do find our way out of things when we believe that we can. And sometimes we're not so sure, but I know that there are people in everyone's lives who know you can do it, who believe you can do it. Yep. That, 100%. um, you know, you, you, you know, attach yourself to those people and they help you through. Uh, I'm watching this feed go by and I can see that my partner, Nicole, is answering on the official modern prairie page she's she's answering some of these questions and she's talking about how we're going to have these um why am i what the word seminar is stuck in my head but it's not a seminar we're gonna workshops. have these workshops thank you uh, <laughs> 58 it happens um we're gonna have workshops too and uh, she's being incredible she oh, this is why i love nicole for so many reasons but she's just She's just so menschy and she's being really supportive to people out there. And I do want to say one quick thing. Um, now that we've gotten, we've started talking about grief and I see a lot of people are, are sharing about their grieving processes and losses and stuff. You know, there may be value at some point in doing a workshop about grief yes. and grieving. Mm -hmm. And I will say this also, my, my best friend, Sandy, who I briefly mentioned, lost her son, her firstborn son at 16 to uh, meningococcal meningitis. And, um, it, it was, I've, I've, I've witnessed trauma, but this was, this was beyond trauma in my opinion. And she not only came through all of that, but she wrote this amazing book called how to survive the worst that can happen. Talking about stepping stones. She talks about tiny little stepping stones to get through. And it's actually like a workbook mm -hmm. to get through the grieving process of the loss of the child, which is, I said is unfathomable to me. And so maybe at some point we'll, we'll get Sandy in here too, to talk oh, about that'd it. Be amazing. She's just, she's phenomenal. And I, I, I remember, I mean, I, I watched her from 
you know, day three, when I finally got back, I had to fly in from Toronto to be there, to where she is now, this many, many, many years later. And um, I see this person who, and changed her whole life in the process, mm -hmm. and got divorced, and got a career, a new career, and was raising three other children. I mean, this is, and is now married to the most wonderful man, and, ha and is just, she's living this life that she wanted to, always wanted to have, and she has it. And it, and it's, it, that's amazing. And sometimes it takes something to knock us, you know, knock us down or knock us back a step mm. to say, okay, things are, other things are important. My priorities have changed. I have changed. Um, and what's, you know, how, how, how do I work through whatever it is? And that's sometimes when we open our eyes and we say, yeah, I am important and this is not working for me anymore or this is working for me. And we are looking at questions this right now. This is a good one. Um, it's a good question. My best friend just lost her husband to cancer. It happened so fast. She has four children, ages 23, 20, 15, and 13. What could I do for her? Be there. Listen. Listen. We... We can't fix other people's um, situations. We can't fix what has happened to them, um, but we can be there to listen. We mm -hmm. can be that. Um, and it's sometimes that accountability is just listening. Yeah, just showing up and just showing up. up. Don't fix it. No. Don't tell me what to do next or Lord, don't tell anyone relax or calm down or don't worry about it or it's going to be okay or it's going to be okay feel everything cry. right oh. feel everything um and you know out of this is when we can start actually working on ourselves yeah out of this is um when we can make that choice i'm going to stay stuck with horrible grief and anything that happens, yes, it's it's painful, but I can stay stuck or I can start to live again hmm. and maybe live differently. Hmm. How do I honor the person? That's important. And not all at once. Again, no, teeny, no, 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 no. Just like start by brushing your teeth. That's yes. right. Yeah. It's and, and anything. Um, Wow, there's a lot of people talking about grief. Yeah. It's interesting. Sometimes and I think we're all, you know, we're all coming out of, uh, you know, saying something obvious, we're all coming out of two or three years of, of a really difficult time and getting out there again, being social again, being this close to someone. <laughs> <laughs> no, with, yeah, I know, without masks. Without a mask on. Um, and recalibrating. Well, and, and, and also finding, you know, I found that the before the pandemic actually happened, we were already sort of siloing um, people, you know, uh, the internet for all of its wonder and it's enabling us to connect yes. in this incredible way, also enables people to say really horrible, horrible things. Yes to one another that they would probably never, never say in person. They'd never have the guts to. Wouldn't have until it started to become so apparent that this is now the new way we communicate. Right. And then the pandemic hit, and then we were even more isolated, and then there was all this really difficult stuff we were going through socially and politically, and people were arguing more and more. I mean, you've seen it. We see it yeah. We see it on the news all the time, and the, the fighting and the the just the volume has gone up. And so here we are now, we're all coming back out again. And we, I feel like we all have to relearn how to be citizens yes. and how to be kind, kind, kind to ourselves mm -hmm. and to one another. Mm -hmm. um, and so it, it, it's hard, but it's almost like a, a reset do over now. It is. This is an opportunity to grow and change and become better and be curious about why is that person angry? Why is that person hurt or yes. sad? 
Why is that person lashing out at me? Because very often when they're lashing, it has nothing to do with us. Exactly. And everything to do with what's happening in their lives, who did something to them, then we take it personally and then we carry it on. Oh. And that's, you know, some of the topics that we are going to be talking about. You know, we feel stuck in, you know, our old way of thinking, negative self-talk, mm -hmm. judging ourselves, mm -hmm. um, not trusting our own decisions. And that's a big part of it. Not, we, I don't want to be sexist because I think everyone does this. We've gotten to a point where we can Google everything or we can figure something and we don't trust our own decisions. Where did our instinct go? Mm -hmm. And so when we don't trust ourselves, we can stay stuck there too, because I honestly believe everyone, 99%, there's always that one size fits most. Everyone makes the best decision that they can make at that moment in time with all of the information that they have. That doesn't mean five minutes later, they're going to have different or new or other information. Right. That doesn't mean the decision was wrong. That just means I have to make another decision now. And so we're so afraid of being wrong or judged, even with by ourselves, um, that we don't make decisions. Another way to get stuck. Yes. I'm just not going to do anything. I don't know what to do. I don't know what my night, next perfect step is. So I'm not going to make a step at all. That's the, the problem I have with that statement is the word perfect. perfect. Exactly. And that's why I specifically use that word because there is no such thing as perfect. Oh, thank God. There's best. We can be the best we can be every single day. We're going to be the best that we can be tomorrow. Well, that's not the same as today because tomorrow's tomorrow. I'm going to be the best that I can be tomorrow. And maybe I'm exhausted. So I'm a little different than the day before. Mm. That's okay. But when we're, when we are going up, when we are, I don't want to say comparing, but when it is us against us or me against me, meaning what can I do today that is going to be a little bit better than yesterday? But that's just based on me, not on anybody else. Yeah. Um, and so the negative self-talk, I don't know if I said that, um, that can get us into trouble too. Oh, 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 <laughs> yes, it can. And again, we, we create things, narratives in our head and then we, and then we, we search out anything that's going to support it. Yeah. Yeah. Never and always. The worst. I'll never be able to deal with. They always. Those are the worst. Perfectly said. <laughs> um, you know, we can get stuck in our own bodies. Age. I'm 60. I'm 54. 55. 54. Now what? I was 50. Fired from my job. Now what? Well, I could still be in that now what scenario and be stuck. I can say it and be stuck there. Yeah. Or move on. So we can get stuck in our age. We can get stuck in our weight. We can get stuck in, well, I don't know how to cook healthy, so I'm just not going to. Well, okay. There's a really easy way to figure that out. Look. Buy a cookbook. <laughs> <laughs> not mine. It's not healthy. Um, <laughs> That's all comforty fat food. And it's, um, you know, and we can, we can get stuck in our relationships. We can get stuck in, you know, oh. an unhappy marriage, <sighs> giving up on love. Mm -hmm. I got married at 51. Man of my dreams. Don't tell him I said that. <laughs> <laughs> he is, he is wonderful. And I, I found him later in life. Yeah. And it was on a plane, random. I'm not saying anything. Dating sites, great. Any way that you can meet someone new, meet someone new. It doesn't matter if you're 54, 44, 24. I would much rather meet somebody at 50 than at 23. Oh, I am. I trust my ability to choose so, so much better. And I met my husband at 
49. I turned yeah. 50 with him. And, um, and you know, it's no secret. I've been married. I was married twice before. And it just, it, this, I'm not, I don't even want to talk about those two relationships. Mm -hmm. Just suffice it to say that this relationship is easy. Yes. It's mutual. Mm -hmm. We respect each other. We support each other. And we do for each other. Yes. And give each other the latitude to do for ourselves. He mm -hmm. gives me space to be, who, not just gives me space, but supports and adores whoever I am at whatever moment I am and whatever I'm doing and tells Amazing. me there's nothing you can't do. And it, it works the same way with me for him. Right. And um, I was nowhere near being able to have this in my 20s or 30s or 40s. Right. I was the same way. I, I was married very young. And, um, you know, the difference of this marriage is I know, I think I know who I am now. And if I'm figuring it out and I'm evolving and I see, we, we did not come together to change one another, but that doesn't mean we don't influence one another. We can influence with our positivity. We can influence with our self-love. We can influence with our self-acceptance because all of a sudden, if we stick to our guns, and that doesn't mean being a pushover, that does not mean being stepped on. That doesn't mean getting yelled at because somebody else has a different temperament. It just means I'm gonna let them be them. I'm gonna be me. And me is, I'm gonna let it blow over and then I'm gonna talk. That doesn't mean I accepted it. It yeah. doesn't mean it's okay. It just means I'm smart enough to know that meeting fire with fire is not gonna work. <laughs> you and I are going to have to do a solo session on that because there's some fireworks in our house. When we both lose it, we both get blind to that that person that that we are inside that goes, no, not right now. Give me a minute. Oh, yeah. and it's it's okay on the side. <laughs> okay. <laughs> See, but there you go. Now, I'm... I don't want to get stuck in that. I don't want to, I don't right. want to do that. We neither does he, neither of us want to do right. that. That's just sort of a, like, a, it's a default. Mm -hmm. Um, and we both know we loathe it. So here we are. I'm, I'm talking about this. He would be here talking about the same thing. And there's a willingness to change and grow yes. and it's going to take baby steps and we're never going to be perfect at it. Right. But at least we're willing and curious about becoming curiosity. I love that. That was my word for 2021 was curiosity because we don't know everything. Not everybody knows everything. And what somebody else says, it doesn't mean it's the truth. Oh boy. And we have to remember that ourselves. If somebody says something that you don't agree with, okay, that's, I, that's not, that's not the truth. And especially if it's directed at you, yeah. well, that's really not the truth. Okay. Well, I, just because you said it doesn't mean I'm going to own it. They can still say it. We can't control what other people say. I'm just not going to own it. Or think or believe. My, um, my, my therapist of many, many, many years, whose name is Marta, we call her Smarta, used to say, you're never going to be able to prove to anyone your intentions. Correct. They'll never know. So don't do it. It's like going to a hardware store for bread. It's exactly, it's never going to happen. And that's, you know, expectations is something that, that, that I talk about with clients a lot. And it's, we don't lower our expectations or raise our expectations for other people. If we know that person, be adaptable to that's the great. weight you could lose. Yes. Is the weight love, of what others, others think, think of, of you. you. I love that. That's, That's true. One. Thank you. Um, adapt the expectations that you have of someone else to make them be successful, to allow them to be successful. Um, and that is, we don't always do that. Uh, I, we should mm. love one another every day. I'm looking to see yes. if anybody else has be any kind. questions. Mary at 50. Married 50 years this time. Congratulations. Congratulations. So lucky with this man. Aww. Oh, I love Bless that. Bless you. Oop. Oop. Wait. I, nope. Cancel. I am not a techie. 
<laughs> um, let's see. I thought I saw a question from Nicole that time. We're looking. We're going to see if we can answer any of your questions because we have about 15 minutes yeah. left to go. Thank you for the conversation. Now we're caught up. Um, it's a personal question. Have I heard from my brother? Yes, I talk to my brother on the regular. Um, my tall, handsome brother. Respect and kindness go a long way. Married 41 years. Oh, these, these things make me so happy. You know, the other thing, as we're looking through and looking for other people's questions, the questions that we ask ourselves and the questions that we pose to ourselves and being honest with ourselves. Do we want to know the answer? Do we need to know the answer? Are we telling ourselves the truth? Oh, that's a biggie. That's, that's a big deal. Um, and that is very often when we keep things up here and we don't either write it down or, or, or get it out verbally. When you say things, I, I talk to myself a lot. It comes from living by myself for 15 years, but my husband will walk by my office and he's like, who are you talking to? I'm like, myself, stop interrupting me. Um, <laughs> you know, when you say things out loud, they sometimes sound very different than they do, you know, kind of bouncing around in your head. Yeah. So, you know, and, and I can't think of an example, um, you know, right now, but they're important, they're, you know, important questions. Do I really want to do this? No. Oh, there's another word. No. no. No is a complete sentence. I posted this. <laughs> I know. It's my favorite thing ever. And the other thing about no that you said that I love is when you say no to something. Yes. When you say no to something, even flip that around. When you say yes to something. There you go. That means you're saying no to something else. Because we have a finite amount of time in our lives and a finite amount of energy. We may think that we have infinite but we don't. So when you're saying yes to something that you really maybe don't want to do, you don't believe in, or it's cutting into me time, oh, workout oh. time. So you're saying yes to something. You're saying no to something else. Yeah. So when you're saying yes, give yourself a second. What am I saying no to? Am I saying no to that downtime that I really need? Am I saying no to spending some time with my husband because I've been away for six days, but my friend really needs me. Well, okay, you know, and we have to prioritize that ourselves and not have someone else making those decisions for us or prioritize for us or make us feel guilty. Oh, <laughs> how about making yourself feel guilty? Yeah, that's, that's, that's even worse. I put so much pressure on myself for so much of my life to be exactly what everybody thought I should be and yes. go to the places I was supposed to go and show up. And I don't like big social events. I just don't. And I spent so much of my life suiting up and showing up and smiling and looking great. And boy, did that key into my addiction stuff mm. to enable me to be able to be out with people. And now I'm at that age where I just go, no, I don't. I don't want to be in that situation where I'm uncomfortable and I'm unhappy and my feet hurt and I'm wearing something I don't want to wear and I'm yeah. dealing with people that I, I, I just, you know, I, I have to allow myself to not put myself in that position anymore. Correct. And when I do go, it's because I really want to be there. You want to be there and you're going to be who you want to be. Right. When you show up someplace that you don't want to be, it, we can, we, it takes energy. Oh. It takes a lot of energy. And we really do have a finite amount of energy every day. And what I like to ask my clients are, is what you, where do you want to allow your energy to go? Who do you want to share it with? Not who deserves it. Who do you yeah. want to share it with? Because some people are going to give it back to you. Some people are going to suck it out of you, but you've got to keep some for yourself. So thinking about that, if it, if it's a no, if it's a, if you're saying yes to wanting to say no, that's a lot of energy. Yeah. And that's 
you know, prioritizing ourselves and making ourselves important. Again, that's tall order because yeah. the immediate the immediate thing for me as a mother and a wife and a person with a career and is a grandma, uh, yeah. and a grandma. Uh, but back when, now, yes, I'm definitely more inclined to listen to my own self and what I need and what I want. By the way, we're in a, quite a rainstorm. I know. Right now. Did you watch it come through? <laughs> Unbelievable. Um, is that I, with the kids at home and all the responsibilities I had, taking time to do that stuff for myself or to do what I needed for myself. This conversation came right, right at the right moment. So oh, your English, my English is perfect. perfect. And I'm so glad. I'm glad that you're here. And that's the thing. Everyone is, everyone who's here, who is. That, this is a big one. Oh, mama. Wait, where is it? Bella Cottage. Uh, grateful for the conversation. So many times I feel so alone and happy with your honesty. I'm not alone with my thoughts. You're not. Do you, they, I can guarantee that there is nothing anyone has gone through that they've done completely on their own that someone hasn't been through before and is going to go through after. Correct. Not exactly the same. No. But we can not fix, not correct, not, none of us are broken. None of us need to be fixed. We just need to be heard. That actually makes me cry. <laughs> I love that. I love the idea that none of us are broken no. and that we just need to be heard. And that's, I'm going to pivot back to Modern Prairie. That's what this is. Yes, this that's is what this place community is. To be heard and to share, share and to know that your feelings are not only validated, but they're respected and appreciated. And odds are we felt exactly, exactly the, the same. same. Yeah. And Never it's... alone. It's a big, big deal. Uh, love this talk. Thank you, Monica. I was meant to come across this today, so grateful. Grateful to have you here, kitty girl. I like kitty girl. Um, uh, looking, looking. Saying Sing. no is very, there you go. Yeah, saying no is very important. It shapes our fate. Ooh, oh, that's my. good. Can I write that down? <laughs> Because yes, it, it yes it does. There's sorry to kick you. That's okay. There's no um, it, it, it's this complete sentence, and your text is perfect. I'm not even going to go on about it. <laughs> we need to hear from ourselves first. Self love yes. is not selfish. No, but selfless. Correct. Oh, don't ever let anybody say if you're taking care of yourself that it's selfish, or think that yourself. It is imperative well this makes me want to do a giant seminar in like a convention center just so everyone can be in a room together and 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 get it out and understand because once one person says something and that's why you know we're, we're going back and forth and imagine a lot of us would, <laughs> oh so fun. energy um but it would someone says something and you're like oh they get it they've been there too mm -hmm. I'm not afraid to share it now. I'm not afraid to think that I'm different or alone or the hand goes up. And you're like, me too. In a good way. Me, me, me too in all ways. I yeah. mean, we've all, we've, we've, I keep saying we've all been through it. Right. We've all been through it. Wish I had said no to the bike ride Saturday and what <laughs> to get me that would well, be when I stayed so yeah, I can drink lemonade. But it was, you felt great afterwards. You maybe wanted to say no first. That's true. But the sense of accomplishment great. after, if you can breathe and you not pass out. I applaud you. <laughs> hydrate. Very important to hydrate on days like that. I need this I today. I need this today. Oh, oh. I love that. From Chile. This is people. Yeah, like, Chile, Italy, the Florence, world. Greece. Greece. Um, that, is the, that is the power. Costa, Costa Rica. Rica. Little House on the Prairie. What a, a blessing. Yeah. All of these people start. What's great is that now, you know, because of the platform Point that Little House has en enabled right. me to have, yes. we can reach yes. out to all these people in it and use it to bring us together, together as a community. Absolutely. That's what we are. That's what Modern Prairie is. It's a community um, of people supporting 
one another and understanding one another and respecting one another and, and learning, learning and, and learning. learning and learning and sharing and bringing hope. That's Big the deal. thing. Bringing hope where sometimes we don't necessarily think that there is. Yeah. 100%. I think we've all been there too, that it's, it's hopeless and it's not. We have five minutes left. Is there anything that we I, haven't touched on. I, I think, you know, as we, as we start to wrap up, um, and as Melissa has, has said, there will be workshops and there will be talks and we'd love to hear from you what's, um, what's on your mind. Where's maybe areas you're stuck that we can start to address. You, we, we have included the link in all of these things to your Instagram page, but do you want to tell people where your website is and give them all that? That'd be wonderful. Um, well, you can also go to do anything to Modern Prairie, and I believe it is info at modernprairie.com. Is an email address. Is the email if you address. Have questions. If you have any questions or any, you know, want to put um, anything in there, I can be found um, at christinesemple.com. That is my website. I share 30 to 45 minute 